Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Gen uh, Genesis chapter 10. 10 being the number of Gentiles. And what we're going to do is we are going to expand our family tree. We can run ourselves back to Shem, Ham, or Japheth. And from those three boys, we're going to run ourselves to the nations. In Genesis chapter 10. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now to them were sons born after the flood. Remarkable, because here we are today. And the sons of Japheth, the European, Gomer, Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, Meshach, and Tyrus. And you can run those up right, what they say to be. Uh, they say that um, Gomer is Germany. Not sure about Magog. Everybody's got something about Magog. Uh, Magi, Greece, and Syria. And just move on. The sons of Gomer. Ashkenaz. Going through the second time. I still don't know these people's names. But it's okay. Give it the best shot you can. I mean, why go run to Hebrew and Greek when you can try to pronounce these names that are in English? And we probably got them wrong. And Rithath, and Togama, and the sons of Javan, Eshaz, and Tarshish, that would be Spain. And Jonah gets a ship that goes to Tarshish. He's going the complete opposite direction of Nineveh. Kittim and Dudanim. By these were the isles, the Mediterranean Sea isles, of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families and their nations. Now we're going to see the next chapter. We're going to see Babylon. And Babylon or Babel is going to be the language change. So verse 5 of chapter 10 is written after that change, after the languages. Man has already, in chapter 10, he's already developed languages of confusion because of Babel. And tongues are a, are a language. It's not a blabbling. The sons of Ham. Now these are your Africans. When do they become colored? I don't know. Cush. They say that's Ethiopia. And Mizram. They say that's Egypt. And Foot. Foot. And Cana. Well, there's an interesting name. Because that's the people that are in the land of Palestine when Israel comes and God says, wipe them out. So, as the children of Ham are making their way to the continent we know as Africa today, they're, I don't know how they did it, you know, wagons or whatever, how they did it. They're making their way to Africa and they stop in the land of Palestine. Some go forward and some remain. So, these are the ones, the people that God tells them, hey, get them out of here. Later on. 
And the sons of Cush, Seba, and Havilah, Sabta, and Rama, Sabtekah, and the sons of Rama, Sheba, and Dedan. As far as Africa, Psalms 105.23 and Psalms 106.21. And Cush, son of Ham, begat Nimrod. Now this is an interesting character. His name means rebel or panther. He is the 13th from Adam. 13 is a number of rebellion. If you want to have fun, it's an interesting book, but it gives you a headache. Babylon Mystery, Babylon, Babylon Mystery, Mystery, Babylon Mystery. I forget which one is book. It's a great book, but it's hard reading. You will have to read to the passages four or five times as you read that book. But they will tell you from Nimrod to Tammuz to December 25th. And you see it with, he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Babel. Here comes your world religions. Still today, from the 13th of Adam after the flood, Here's your Tammuz and your Christmas and your Easter and your uh, Aphrodite and your uh, Estar. Here they are. And we'll see more about Babel in the next chapter and as we go through the Bible again. So, Kush beget Nimrod. You want to know what's funny? Elmer Fudd of Bugs Bunny was once named Nimrod. Hunting the bunny. He was a mighty hunter. Mighty hunter. Esau. Genesis 25, 27. Says he's a cunning hunter. The two hunters in the Bible do not have a good name for themselves when it comes to the Bible. Esau denied his, his, his birthright and cursed the nation of Israel. Nimrod brings us the religions of the world. They come back and go back to Nimrod and Babylon. Esther, Easter, Easter comes from Babylon. And there was a gate dedicated to Easter, Esther, Futurity. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, beholding the evil and the good. God knew this man, and not for good. And the beginning of his kingdom. I do believe that's the first time that word shows up. I don't think we've seen kingdom before. And the first kingdom that shows up, as far as I see, is Babel. Nimrod was the king of Babel. I don't think we saw a king before. The first king we see is Nimrod. We see the first kingdom, Babel. And what's that play out through the Bible? Well, what do you have to say about Babylon? Babylon runs from Genesis 10 and runs all the way to Revelation. Mystery Babylon. And Eric, and Akkad, and Kana, in the land of Sinar. That's a particular expression found in the Bible. Out of that land, Sinar, <clears throat> went forth Asher, the Asherites, and built Nineveh. Well, look at this. This is the place that Jonah was told to go in verse 4. He heads to Tarshish. Ham's children is going down to Africa. Stop off in, in Cana. They're also going southeast. When you look where Nineveh, 
on a map. They're in the wrong spot. And the Ninevites, the Asherites, were known to be violent and wicked warriors and soldiers as far as how they treated the people they took and killed in war. And you see Jonah in Genesis chapter 10 on the two places that he was supposed to go and the place he went. Isn't that interesting? And the city Rehoboth and Canaan. And resting between Nineveh and Calham, these are cities, and the same is a great city. Mazram beget Lidim, and Enim, Lehabim, and Nathahim, and Pathrisdom, and Kashimon, out of whom came Philistum, and that's your Philistine. The Philistines come from Ham. Now, when you look at the Philistines and the Palestines that are over there today, they're not colored. They're tan. But most of them come from Ishmael of Abraham and Hagar, who was African. And Cana beget Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth. This is, one of the, this is one of the families, a tribe, that God says, when you go into that land, Israel, you wipe these people out. And Jebusites, that's another name, wipe them out. Jebusites, where they live. How do you know where they live? They live where Jerusalem is. And David conquered the Jebusites by, I can't, as soon as I, I hate when I, I'm about to say the name, the name is Joab. Remember he said, who you know, can get up in the gutters and kill them all shall be made ruler. That's the Jebusites. That's the land of Benjamin. Jerusalem is in the land of Benjamin. And Amor Amorite. And the Gergesite. And the Hivite. There's another name. you got to wipe these people out of the land because they are worshipping false gods. They are killing their children to gods. They are got worshiping the stars they've got green bushes called groves they have defiled the land to where the cup is full at that point when Israel crosses that Jordan River into Jericho the cup of, the, of these people in that land is, is filled they're gone and Joshua goes in there and battles them all but Israel does not do full promise they leave some and rebelled against the word of God. The Arbordite, the Zemarite, the Hamasite, and afterwards were the families of the Canaanites spread aboard. They went out, they spread it. And the border of Canaanites was from Sidon. As thou comest to Gerar, recognize that with um, Isaac. Isaac doesn't go to Egypt like his father did. He goes as far as Gerar. And there he pulls, you know, she's my sister. And on to Gaza. Well, we know where Gaza is. As thou, comest, as thou goest to Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, they are under the Dead Sea. The Hamites are in the region of Edom which will be Edom later on. The south of the Dead Sea, still short of Africa, a little eastern of Africa. And Aduma and Zebum, even to Lesha. And I mean, try your best with the names. These are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, as we'll see in the next chapter, Lord willing, and their tongues in their countries and in their nations. Unto Shem also. This is the line of Jesus Christ. This is why this one's last. 
If you're going to close this chapter, you close this chapter with Jesus Christ. Japheth, he's the European, he's the traveler. He's the adventurer. Ham, he's the servant. Unto Shem, he's the religious. Also the father of the children of Eber. And from the Hebrew word, one called over. And eventually that's where Hebrew will come from, from Eber. We'll see his name one more time. Another name. We'll see that name, but another man later. The brother of Jesus, the elder, even to him were children born. The children of Shem, Elam, and Asher, Arphaxad, and Lud, and Amram. Back to 21 again now. Unto Shem also the father of the children of Eber, the brother of Jason. Well, we don't see Eber mentioned in 22. So the brother of Jason, the elder, we now know of Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Japheth is the elders of those three boys, according to this passage. But usually Shem's name is mentioned first. Because he's the line of Jesus Christ. The children of Shem, Elam, Asher, that's a name in the Bible, and our facts had. And Lud, and Aram. Now, Numbers 23, 7, when Balaam is called by Moab to curse the children of Israel, Balaam comes from Aram. Interesting note. And the children of Aram, us. That's where Job is from, but this is not the us of Job's homeland. We will see, Lord willing, later. We will see the us of the children of Esau. Now there's a land called Aram. He has a son. He is a man. This land of Aram is up by the Euphrates River, north. Uz is down by the Dead Sea in the land of Edom. And Hull, and Gether, and Mash. I think that's one of the easiest names we've seen through the list so far. And our facts had begat Selah, and Selah begat Eber. And unto Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Pegleg, for in his days was the earth divided. Pegleg means divided. Something happened at this point of time with this boy by Eber. And many believe, and I don't know if it's right, I don't know, is when the continents began to split apart. And if you were to look at a world map and you look at Africa and South America, they look like they should be connected together. And they say in the Pacific Ocean that there's a great rip. Now, is this what happened here at 25? It could have. It may not have. I don't know. But the earth was divided. Not the people in their languages. Chapter 11. The earth was divided. And it may be that the earth was all together. So when these three boys and their families venture out. That's how Shem came to America. And South America. And Central America. That's maybe how the what we know as the Russians today. Ventured into a place called today Alaska. You say well how did the Native Americans. And how did all the animals get over to America. Well, the earth was joined together and then divided at one time. That's how it happened. And his brother's name was Joktan. And Joktan begat Amadad and Shalfa and Hazar Marias and Jera and Hadarim and Uzael and Dikla and Obal, Abiel and Sheba. And Orpha and Havilah 
and Joab, Jobab. All these were the sons of Jochim. You go run back to, uh, to Luke chapter 3, and Luke chapter 3, run that line of Jesus Christ. And their dwellers was from Mesha, this would be a town, as thou goest to Sephar, a mount on the east. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, after the nations. So these three boys have something in common. Their families, they have their tongues, they have their lands, they have their nations. The earth was divided. I believe God has separated man because he separated one nation of Israel. Not to have anything to do with any other nations. But if they were to seek after the true God, then they were to come. These are the families of the sons of Noah, what we just read. In their nations, uh, in their generations, in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. So you would have a map that God would see. So what you have in chapter 10 is the three boys, you got them in one verse. Japheth is given four verses in chapter 10. Ham is given 15 verses. Shem is given 11 verses. You have a total of 32 verses. And Ham gets the most. China and India that are of Shem are the highest population rate in the world over a billion and the third rate is America with 300 million it goes China and India and America as far as the population of this world and then when it comes to Shem the Asian he's moving west to east Ham is moving, supposed to go south, but he's going south and southeast. Jathan, he's going west, he's going northwest, he's going north, and he's going northeast. He goes as far as what we call Iraq today. And he goes west, and that's it. Shem is your population of your Asia, your Americas, and your Middle East. Ham is the population of the Middle East areas and Africa at the time of Genesis chapter 10. There's more spreading of Shem than there's anybody else. And the Europeans do not meet with the Native American Shems until you get the Vikings. Forget Christopher Columbus. The Shemites, the Native Americans, were already known by the Europeans, by the Vikings, and maybe even earlier ancestors. Columbus was just looking not for people. He's looking for more money with spices. And then took a vacation in, in uh, Jamaica. The Bahamas. 